Sonia, Fuyuhiko, and Peko. Why mess around? Let's just figure out who it is. I do have one hope, which is that Fuyuhiko and Peko are together. I also share that hope. So if we get either Fuyuhiko or Peko, next time we'd better get the other one. Or else we're coming after you, Owl. We'll blame you for the randomness of your program. That's right. It will be your fault, Owl Catcher. Speaking of it being Owl's fault, we're the Bittersweet Gamers. I'm Wee Square. And I'm the Opinionator. <laughs> okay, no, Owl, you're awesome. <laughs> Come on, Sonya! Because then we're guaranteed to get what we want. Hey, there's a 30% chance of it being her. Huh? Huh? Uh... Oh. A uh, tiny little Fuyuhiko. In all honesty, Fuyuhiko is one of my favorite characters from Danganronpa 2. Fuyuhiko is awesome. He had an enormous amount of development in the main story, which is kind of something that I'd like to see more often, if and you catch my drift. <laughs> we had a lot to say about him in the LP. I'm not sure what we can really do to add to that, except just heap praise upon the guy. Like what? Are we going to find out he was in a strict Yakuza upbringing? Spoiler, we already knew that. You couldn't hang out with him for so long. That is true. We might find out something about Peko, which would be interesting and also oh. pretty unique, you know? Yeah, they are pretty closely tied together. I love that sneer on his face. Despite the attitude, he's a really nice guy who tries to do the right thing and tries to treat people right. It's not that he doesn't have the attitude. Right. He's still got a short temper. Short joke! But after Peko sacrificed herself for him, he serioused up pretty quick. He was on the way to it. But yeah, he really threw himself into everything. Like at full spirit, whatever his decision was going to be. And then later on in the game, he started, like, running around checking on people. Right. To make sure everyone was doing all right. Really appreciated that. Like the big moment with Akane when he was trying to console her. Yeah. I guess another thing I could say about Fuyuhiko is that the way Fuyuhiko was treated in this game is kind of what I want to see in a game like this. Which is to say they get development in the story. Yeah, I... I really dislike when a lot of the character development happens in an optional side thing. And only in that. And the optional side thing is separate from the main story? Excuse me? But don't... we didn't get that with Fuyuhiko at all. No, we didn't. Just so we're clear, I don't plan to act friendly and shit with other you guys. God damn it, <laughs> Owlcatcher! You put a fucking typo in my first fucking quote where I introduce myself. The hell is wrong with you? With other you guys? Who says that? What, don't you have eyes that can see? I only got one eye and I can see the typo. What the fuck is your excuse? You already ruined this one. The hell else do you want me to say for my fucking quote? Hey, for your heat. Eh? Where are the goods? Are you serious right now? <laughs> are you serious right now? Where are the goods? <laughs> Is there some reason you want me to answer where these mysterious goods are? Is there perhaps something you were trying to draw out from me? Well, let me tell you where the goods are. They're in the fucking lobby! <laughs> there, are you happy? Yes, actually. <sighs> I love food, each other. <laughs> For anybody that doesn't remember, in chapter three, it's like he's in 19 places in the hospital and he just constantly says the goods are in the lobby and it had a lot of fun with that. Well, let's get started. I don't remember this at all. Neither do I. Oh my God. But right, he no longer cried about anything because he's tough and stern and, and like he is and he isn't. He tries too hard to be independent because it's too easy for him to be considered dependent and not his own person. Because of the Yakuza thing? Yeah, I'm assuming that we'll find out more about that. And of course, the little bastard likes sweets and cookies. This is why he is so short, because all he eats is junk. And he can't drink milk. Well, neither can I. It's poisonous. But that's also a trope with short characters, is that they don't drink milk. You know what's in milk? Lactose. You know what lactose is? Well, sugar. 
Ah, that's a good point. It's all freaking sugar, man. Well, Everyone doesn't you... mind eating the other sugar. So why does he have a problem drinking milk? Ah! <laughs> I, the opinionator, will judge everybody else's dietary choices. <laughs> what are you gonna do about it? So good. How much longer do we have to stay in this place? I feel like it's gonna make me rot to death. <laughs> no, what's gonna make you rot to death is, the, <laughs> is your tooth decay from all the dang sugar. Yeah, but still, I guess talking to someone isn't so bad. I'm glad I met your approval. You didn't. I oh. promise you, you didn't. So, for you, Hiko, uh, according to the gift guide, it wants me to give you some stardust. And this antique doll. There's something you want to talk about, buddy? Or, uh... What the hell are you talking about? I like refined and girly shit, all right? <laughs> you okay. said it, not me. Look, in my room... I want to look at pretty shit like this. The gift guide also says that I want booze and a package of freaking wheat. <laughs> you gonna say something about that? <laughs> You're underage. Well, the wine is non-alcoholic. <laughs> it's okay. I'll keep it between you and me, buddy. Hajime, why don't you come in my room? I'll show you my special sword technique because apparently I like this too. Don't you want to see my sword technique? Huh, that seems strange. Why would you be interested in sword techniques? Are you freaking making fun of me? I would never. Oh. oh, I see. So you're giving that to me? That's good that you're giving that to me. Because I just went through verbalizing everything that I told you that I like. That's pretty considerate. <laughs> you make an awesome underling. I live to serve. Yeah, you're doing pretty good so far. I don't know. Hey, how's you, man? Now, this is a purely hypothetical <laughs> thing here, what I'm getting at, but is there any woman who's important to you? I feel like this was somehow brought upon by the subject of swords. What kind of question is that? That's fine. Do you have one or not? Uh, honestly, I have never seriously thought about it. Fucking wuss. <laughs> You're such a kid. <laughs> if you did have one, I was going to tell you to take good care of her before something happens that you really regret, but... I guess it's a bit too soon for you. Foreshadowing! But when you do have one someday, make sure you take good care of her. Don't be like me. I feel very in sync right now. <laughs> I, I've lost two important women. Okay, okay. One of them's obviously Pecco, because you can't hang out with him till after that. Right. So maybe the other one's his mother? Oh, yeah. Pecco committed her crime because... His little sister was killed. I forgot about that, too. Murder mystery syndrome. Oh, right. That is exactly what happened, was, was his connection to the murder mystery. Good lord. Okay, what the fuck is up with all these typos? Peckos? Peckos? <laughs> I'm talking about the woman that I love, and you call her Peckos? Like she's a bag of Cheetos? <laughs> oh, my God. Huh? Well, then, don't feel sorry for me. Not like I wanted to make this awkward. You made this awkward because you suck. <laughs> no, you made this awkward because you read my mind and saw the typo. But if my sister was still alive, I'd really want you guys to meet her. You'd probably be shocked. Wasn't she supposed to be the actual heir? Yes, that's right. She was supposed to be the actual heir. And... Man, what did they, what did they say about her? It was so long ago at this point. <laughs> She was. Didn't he say she was really scary or something? Yeah. If you put it like that, she must have been one hell of a sister. Demi Do you know what my sis's ultimate talent was? It wasn't being Yakuza? That's because, kind of scary. Because of course she has an ultimate talent, because that's how this game works. She was the ultimate little sister. Isn't that funny? Also, what? Who the hell awarded her <laughs> this title? <laughs> I don't know. I'm terrified to even consider the implications here. Ultimate Emoto sounds like some type of pervy fetish, doesn't it? Right? The ultimate little sister? How is she an awesome little sister? Uh, it's hard to put it into uh, words exactly, <laughs> as I think about a certain shape in my mind that may have something to do with this. Anyway, 
She was definitely an amazing sister. Amazing shape is probably what I'm getting at. She was always making a fool out of me, but it was always cute when she'd need my help. Plus, if she cooked fried noodles during the temple festival, a huge line would form outside of the temple just so they could get a chance to look at her. Also, the noodles were all right. <laughs> and she got an insane number of contracts from hand towel companies. You know? What? Hand towel companies. You, uh, you understand? That when I was talking about amazing shapes before, <laughs> I was quite serious about amazing shapes. <laughs> she was self-centered, selfish, extremely arrogant, but even so, she had this subtle way of making people do what she wanted. <laughs> she definitely deserved to be called the ultimate Yakuza. Within the clan, she was even called the reincarnation of my uncle, who was the most powerful of the Kuzuryus. Was he the ultimate little brother? Yeah, probably. The most powerful of the Kuzuryus. I'd like to know more about that, too. I have to get this out of the way or I won't be able to move on. In Devil on the G-String, one of the main characters was the super Yakuza boss, Gonzo. And he was an absolutely terrifying monster <laughs> like full of evil and base instincts but also brilliant and able to just cow people with his sheer will and could probably fight a tank with a knife oh god because it's not that he had special powers it's that he could fight the tank with the knife because he would approach the tank and he would feel like he was going to win against the tank with his knife. And the guy in the tank is going to be like, that guy's coming to kill me! And just run away from him. That was, that was what he did. Yeah. Well, he was before my time and probably in a different genre, so I don't really know the details. But apparently, he was known as the Overlord of the South. What? They say his final confrontation with the detective who is pursuing him nearly destroyed the world. I feel like this is a reference to something we're not getting. Why the fuck would you think this is a reference to something? Because everything else and all the other FDs were <laughs> usually references. Well, that's obviously just a dumb rumor. It probably came from a manga instead of real life. Of course, it's just a rumor. <laughs> That'd be outrageous if it wasn't. <laughs> Well, anyway, she was a really annoying little sister who pissed me off, and I hated her. You can totally tell that by the way I talk. Even so, she was the only little sister I ever had. Even when a faction within the Kuzuryu clan wanted to make her our next leader, she said this, I don't want to lead the clan. The reason I'm so amazing is because I'm your sister. Huh. <laughs> she said that, even though she was better than me at everything. To you, your sister must have truly been the ultimate little sister. Eh, to a bunch of weirdo perverts as well. Yeah, a whole bunch of those. <laughs> yeah, maybe she was. Maybe she was. <laughs> but still, when she said that to me, I couldn't accept it. All I could do was yell at her and say, You lead! I can live by myself! It's certainly not because I didn't want the responsibilities of being a Yakuza leader and wanted to live my life the way I did with the woman I care about. I mean... Fuyuhiko really did just want to do things his way. His position is part of what ruined Peko's life. Part of? It, what he wanted was freedom. Yeah. And he wanted Peko, and he wanted Peko because she's always, she always was there for him. I remember when talking about Leon, like in, in his FTE, I had said that I thought there's actually a lot of value in doing something that's sort of <laughs> preordained or set up for you. Like Mike Rose says... Don't do the job you're passionate about. Have passion for your job. Mm, mm. Now, I'm not saying that I completely buy into that or I completely or think that any of that is the most important aspect of it. But you feel there is value to that sort of viewpoint. There are so many people that cannot find any path at all. And if you have one, why not take advantage of it? Mm -hmm. But I can also see really struggling against it. I mean, I don't want to rehash the argument I made back then because that's also completely the opposite of the case with Fuyuhiko. One of the things that's different about it, even if you ignore the fact that we're talking about organized crime, <laughs> one of the things that's different about Fuyuhiko's situation is it is more restraining in terms of what you can do and who you can associate with mm -hmm. and how you can act because you're a criminal. <laughs> 
you are. Just how small was I? Do you want me to answer that, or...? If you fucking make a joke okay. about how I am five feet one inch tall, <laughs> I will make you pay. You will be noted. So you, Hiko. Why am I even talking to you about this? Huh? That's probably, you know, that, that harmless looking face of yours. <laughs> That's how I get past all my opponents. Those skinny, noodly little arms that don't even look like they can hold a baseball bat. That really stupid ahoge that looks kind of like a sword and maybe like some sort of a spiky knife, but it's actually just a piece of wobbly hair. That insincerity every time you talk. The fact that you get so overwhelmed easily by simple emotional things. Are you done? Maybe your lack of communication skills. Maybe the fact that you keep pestering me about where the goods are. <laughs> Is that a compliment or an insult? You tell me, buddy. You tell me. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, sorry about that. I guess I got all sentimental and shit after all. I really don't mind. I don't care if you mind or not. I mind, <laughs> asswipe. That's why I said it. Are you stupid? Don't you remember all those things I listed off about you? If you think I look like someone who's easy to talk to, then I'll listen to you as much as you want. <laughs> don't act like hot shit, you virgin. I see. So you're implying you're not. I'm a Chad. Get your memes straight. <laughs> Damn it. Anyway, you shut up! Don't talk back to me so calmly! Even though it's happening gradually, I know Fuyuhiko is slowly opening up to me. It's the truth. Once again, I feel like I was able to understand Fuyuhiko a little bit. <laughs> After quickly changing the subject and talking about other things for a while, I quickly fled to my room. Yeah, that's right. I like talking about cookies and dolls. And if you got a fucking problem with that, I will end you. Do you want to come see my Monokuma plushie collection? They're not exactly cute, but I have it, so I might as well show it to someone. Well, I guess I might care about it marginally more than anybody else, but <laughs> no, I don't really want to see it. <laughs> Fuyuhiko, buddy! Want some booze? No, I'm a minor, and it's a long-running theme in Japanese entertainment intended primarily for the consumption of children that you never show anybody underage drinking. So no, I don't want some booze, but if you got the non-alcoholic shit, yeah, I'll take it. Ah. Hey, Hajime, what's the first thing you want to do when you get out of here? Hmm, let's see. First, I want to find a safe place to relax and get some decent sleep. Are you fucking shitting me? That's it? <laughs> that sounds great to me. <laughs> <laughs> Compared to this place, I'd rather stay in a prison. That's an odd comparison. For some reason, a lot of people that I know have spent time in prison. I know all about it. At least this place has soft beds, a beautiful ocean, and entertainment, sort of. Yeah, you're right. Sort of. What about you? What are you going to do? <sighs> Me? First, I'm going to visit my sister's grave. I also need to hold a funeral for Pecco, even though there's nothing left of her. <sighs> And for Mahiru as well. Good on you. I still feel like chapter two of this game was one of the most tragic murders that happened in Danganronpa. Mm -hmm. Because it was all just a giant mess. It didn't have to happen and I'm not even sure it was supposed to. Something that I said a lot during the LP is that when Fuyuhiko, who doesn't quite have it all together, but as the game goes on, gets more and more together. And that's really clear from these. Yeah. When he advanced on Mahiru, we'll never know what he was going to do. We'll never know if he was actually going to kill her. We'll never know if he was just going to threaten her. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I don't think Fuyuhiko knows what he was going to do. And that's part of what makes it so tragic. That's exactly what makes it so tragic. It's because then Peko... She moved to protect him by doing the deed herself. And the thing is, none of that really had to happen. Anyway, regardless of my take on that incident, I really think it says a lot that Fuyuhiko owns up to it, kind of in the right way. Yeah, he took responsibility. <laughs> yeah, he took responsibility. I see. You're right. Hey, Hajime. 
uh, despite all that crap I said last time, I think you're pretty awesome, you know? When it comes to me and the others, at least we know where our confidence is coming from. You. That part of you is missing. Huh. Foreshadowing. <laughs> but despite that, you don't let it get to you. You've kept a cool head throughout all this so far, and you've done really great in the investigations and the trials. That's because only the players have been witness to my mental breakdowns and constant stress. Dude, I'm giving you a compliment. That doesn't mean you have to shoot yourself down. <laughs> You're giving me way too much credit. I'm just trying to endure everything the best I can. That's what I'm talking about. It's amazing enough that you're even able to endure all this. I blindly rushed into revenge without thinking things through with no concern for anything else. And in the end, I can't take back the consequences of that decision. But after seeing you and the others keep it together, I feel like I'm starting to see what I need to be focusing on right now. We'll definitely survive and escape from here. And I'll do anything to make that happen. If not, Peko, Mahiru, everyone's death will go to waste. What do I have to say? <laughs> this is why I like Fuyuhiko. <laughs> Demonstrating how awesome he is right here. Like he's a serious and thoughtful person. And he takes responsibility for things in a good way. And that's when I realized... This wasn't the same Fuyuhiko Kuzuryu I met when we first arrived at this island. Well, it kind of is. Kind of. No, no, no. I realized that, despite what the other voices in my head are saying. Well, that one was still Super Tsundere Fuyuhiko, who was uh, massively posturing everywhere. But I don't think he's a fundamentally different person. He's just a person who has grown through his experiences. This is a man who has overcome great hardships. What can I do from now on? I still don't know, but I do know what I can say right now. Fuyuhiko, let's definitely escape this island, okay? Damn straight. And when we do, would it be alright if we visited their graves together? Oh. Huh? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that would make him happy. Oi, Kura. And Hajime, that part of you may be missing. <laughs> But I think there's still something there, I say, foreshadowing-wise. Because <laughs> I was able to talk to you like this, and I was able to reflect on my past, and from there, unable to move forward. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Maybe your talent is that you're the ultimate counselor, man. Oh! What the heck? I don't want a talent like that. That sounds like it'd be stressful. What? I would love to be the ultimate counselor! Right? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's totally perfect for you. What are you doing in all these FTE videos? You're listening to people's problems and just being nice to them, and then they feel better afterwards, you asshole. I have nothing to say to that. Our somber... Somber? <laughs> A somber? Our somber conversation. Our somber conversation took an unexpected, lighthearted turn, and we laughed harder than we had in a while, at my expense. I was giving you compliments this whole time, you <laughs> piece of shit! Yeah. <laughs> Something else about Fuyuhiko? Mm hmm. He's a surprisingly <laughs> normal person, don't you think? More normal than you would expect? Especially considering his position? You would think he would be kind of a Yakuza stereotype? Well, he was at first. At first, but then he was... betrayed the expectations. It was just like, nah, I'm actually just a normal kid, really. Yep. Yeah. His ultimate Yakuza-ness is just like Byakuya's ultimate affluent progeny-ness. It's something that was bestowed upon him, not really a talent. And that's why he tries to be so independent. And, and isn't, that, isn't that interesting? Like, everything Byakuya has, and ultimate imposter as Byakuya, oh, who, who, who grasps the, the essence of these people and then becomes them. <laughs> because ultimate imposter Byakuya... Is awesome. He is. He's awesome as the ultimate imposter too. I, mean, I really like the guy. Everything that Byakuya had, he fought tooth and nail to get. And you know what he got was was intelligence and wit, uh, some level of physical prowess that he insists he's proud of. 
So he can't be deficient in it in any case. I mean, he did have to beat, like, what, 12 of his freaking siblings? Right, and, and, and perception and stuff like that. Clearly, he's a really talented guy. Well, Fuyuhiko didn't obtain Byakuya's superpowers. Fuyuhiko, the Yakuza, who was, had the title of Yakuza bestowed on him, understood compassion and love mm -hmm. and care for others without respect, and others. respect. But he also learned like tenacity. He's not. He's not. He's not wim wimpy. He's not wimpy. He's not namby pamby. He's not a. He can't help his physical appearance, guys. <laughs> right, right, right. And what an impressive thing for someone like him to learn. How much harder was that for him? Mm hmm. Hey, guys, this is the part where you normally remark upon my ridiculous reaction to you giving me a gift I really like. But you were blathering on about how I'm such a nice fucking guy that you ruined my joke. Real nice. I was going to do something funny and at least get one or two chuckles from somebody somewhere. Thanks. Th this is, oh my God, an item this rare is. See, it's not really landing at all. It's just not landing at all. It's impossible to snag, no matter how many strings you pull. What about the string in the back that makes it go, mama? Oh, it's a piece of cheap junk then. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thanks for giving me this. You knew I liked it because we already had a long conversation. In the name of the Kuzuryu clan, I definitely owe you one. Sweet! Hey, I tell you what, the next time that you got hitting in after you, let us know. We'll take care of it. If that ever happens, you'll be the first to know. I don't know. Hey, Hajime, there's something else I need to talk to you about. Speak away! Hey, wait, where are you going? What are you doing? <laughs> We forgot to look at this. <laughs> His will to live so the others didn't die in vain makes him look like a grown man. Dude, did you just open your menu and look at your e-handbook instead of talking to me when I say there's something I need to talk to you about? <laughs> You're like, oh, you got something important coming up? Hold on, let me check my email on my smartphone real fast and then browse a couple websites so I don't lose... Like, don't miss, lose track of breaking news, because now I can pay attention to you since I got the important stuff out of the way. Is that what you were saying? I just wanted to make sure there weren't any more distractions so I could concentrate on you fully. Uh-huh. Come here. He seems more serious than usual. What's going on? Oh, no! Okay. For a moment, I thought we were going back into the storage room. <laughs> I followed Fuyuhiko until we arrived at his cottage. Remember when I talked to you about sword techniques? Oh, no! Oh. Yo, wait there. I got something from the supermarket, which is undoubtedly where you got this doll that I was so impressed with. I like that giant stack of, like, chips. It looks like chips, even <laughs> though you'd think it'd be sweets. Well, it could be both, you know. Uh, cookies, crackers. He's got a freaking wine goblet. <laughs> and, like, a little tongs for ice. Yeah, he, it's, it's all part of the style. That's see? hilarious. And, and plus, like, the real formal Japanese stuff. It, Little curtain over the bathroom. Or the screen blocking yeah, the, the view of the, the bathroom. folding screen. <laughs> okay, here it is. He slammed a 60-ounce bottle in a glass right in front of me. It's probably the non-alcoholic wine I gave him earlier. Yeah, we've already even talked about booze, so why not? Let's do the booze thing. Is this alcohol? Dude, you gave it to me. No, it's just water. Huh? Listen up! <laughs> just like David said, underage drinking is not allowed under any circumstances. What do you think I am, a criminal? Well, so I guess we're going to do that Yakuza Brotherhood thing. Like, oh, the... share a cup of sake, so to speak. Excellent. Let me tell you, the smell's enough to make me pass out. I advise you not to go within 300 feet of the stuff until you are age 20, in which case your actions are up to your own discretion. Well, I'm not a Connie. I can't smell that far. D don't be absurd! <laughs> now, regardless, it just wouldn't feel right with only a plastic bottle. But fortunately, I, the ultimate Yakuza, occasionally have things about my talent and position that I like. <laughs> Come on, take it. I'll take the glass, but I have no idea what the heck is going on. Uh, this is probably... Uh, what's the name of the ceremony... Uh -huh. Sakazuki. Oh, that sounds about right. It sounds like it's something close to it, but I guess I don't really know what it is. Is this 
Brotherhood cup? Exchanging vows! I am not gonna <laughs> fucking marry you, you goddamn perv! <laughs> I'm not the one who put the option up there! Well, you didn't pick it either, so it's fine. Alright. Would you be talking about a brotherhood cup? Huh? Oh, what? You don't want to? No, 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 it's fine! I just honestly never thought anything like this would ever happen to me. Well, you earned it, man. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously! Don't think about it too much. This isn't about making us real brothers or anything. This is a promise to return alive together. Frickin' come by then, bro! Amazingly, this is the sort of thing someone would say if they were going to die in these games. <laughs> I guess you're right. But you know, the thing about Fuyuhiko, he didn't make enemies. I mean, there is the thing with Mahiru that... Yeah. And, there, and Byakuya. Like, he was too nice to people. Not necessarily overtly. Right. I mean, nobody would ever want to do anything to him. I mean, there, that, there's value in the building up social bonds. Plus, he probably was able to take care of himself. Well, he's five foot one and 94 pounds, though. I mean, well, you know. <laughs> break him over your knee. I will never die. I mean, I've already died once. And Pecco already saved that life, after all. <laughs> But you look the type who dies easily, you know? So I thought it'd be good if we made a promise like this. Bitch, I go Super Saiyan at the end of the game! Are you sure? You look to me more like a Yasuhiro or a Kazuichi. You know that scummy guy that nobody really likes that <laughs> manages to make it to the end anyway by uh, sheer force of being a rodent? But doesn't that mean I don't die easily? Ah! Oh, okay, you got me. You got me on that one. <laughs> hey, don't say something so ominous. The seal. That's why I'm saying that I'll give you half of my life. I mean, you... <laughs> my very first friend. <laughs> Somebody that I can respect. Even now, I'm still worried about whether I deserve to lead the clan. But I feel like that might change if I get out of here alive. Man, if you live through something like this, you are going to be one tough SOB. So Hajime, you better not die either. Fuyuhiko, you are a really great guy. And here he is encouraging us to live. Never, ever, ever stop. Fuyuhiko is in a position that he hates. I mean, he probably doesn't really hate it, but his feelings are complicated regardless. And, and it genuinely might be that he does not like it, but it, he does appreciate some of the things. It's complex. I'm not sure I entirely understand it, and I don't think he does either. Anyway, he's in a situation that he dislikes. The girl who has been his best friend and who he was in love with, who has been there his entire life, has died because of him. He essentially murdered some, but someone else. Mm -hmm. Whether he intended to or not, he did. By acting recklessly, he lost his little sister in this absolutely insane murder tragedy. Swimsuit. And that is the guy. The guy who does not have anything and, is ha and has had things he does not want forced upon him and everything that mattered to him pulled forcefully away. This is the person who says, live and live on. Search persistently and keep on looking for what you are supposed to do. I can see the darkness in his life. Of course, but of course. But it's really surprising that a person this strong became ultimate despair. You know, you're right. I guess what happened in Fuyuhiko's case... Well, actually, because that was before Mahiru and Peko... Like, Mahiru and Peko didn't give themselves up for him before that's that that's what it is. Okay. That's exactly what I was going to say. Yeah. I think it is. it was the loss of Peko and Mahiru... That shook him out of it. Or... Yeah, that... that rekindled his strength? He does have a facade that he has had imposed upon him that does nonetheless appear to be part of his regular personality. And in the beginning of the game, he was acting according to that facade. That was never broken. Like, he hadn't faced... Well, he had faced loss, but... Well, it's just the circumstances of what happened with Pekko were so sad. And yeah. 
and like the aftermath of all of it and the way that he dealt with it afterwards. Like, I don't think this Fuyuhiko could become ultimate despair. Under no circumstances. He's at the absolute opposite of it. You know, it's interesting contrasting him with Nekomaru, which always appears to be what we do is we compare everyone to the previous FTE video we made. But that, that's normal. Nekomaru does not have long to live. And that ag acknowledgement and dissatisfaction with it, Nekomaru does not have experience with death. I mean, there's, there's a kid in the hospital, but that's not quite the same. Either. Right, right, right. It's a different sort of thing. He doesn't have experience with death, but it is on the imminent horizon, just waiting to claim him. Fuyuhiko is someone who has intimate experience of death. And yet, in a lot of ways, both Fuyuhiko and Nekomaru nonetheless manage to look past that. Yeah. I just think that's interesting. Like I said, really like Fuyuhiko a whole lot. So, I hadn't noticed with how in sync with him you are. Yeah, you're right. I'll definitely try to find it too. I accepted the cup and swallowed the water in one gulp. Yeah, no obligations. You don't have to do anything for me at this point. <laughs> well, Yuhiko did the same and suddenly smashed the cup afterwards. What you gotta do! <laughs> Some say shattering the cup is a bad omen, but I prefer it this way. I mean, if you break something, that means it can't be broken ever again. Oh! That's pretty good, man. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, that's right. Do you want to be my underling when we get out of here? I promise you I'll treat you pretty well. You mean like a little brother? <laughs> I, I, I'm sure that what Fuyuhiko said was Buka, subordinate underling. Uh -huh. But But Hajime responded with Kobun, which is, uh... Well, forget the Japanese lesson. <laughs> Nobody cares anyway. <laughs> That doesn't really feel right. Ah, fine. Then you can just be my bro. Excellent. Ah. Well, anyway, we gotta give it our all and think of a way to get out of here. Ain't that right, bro man? So this is what it's like. <laughs> we each took a piece of the broken cup and put it in our pocket. I could feel a strong bond with Fuyuhiko. As long as I have this bond, I will never give up. That's what I believe. It sure sucks when he trip and trips and falls and the glass that's in his pocket <laughs> stabs him, but... <gasps> Honor and humanity. Yeah, there you go. Silver spoon. Now that we're such bros, <laughs> give me your underwear. <laughs> oh my. Isn't it interesting? That's the best he can offer. What do you mean? He is inextricably tied to the Kuzuryu Yakuza clan. Mm-hmm. The best thing that he can offer, especially because he's going to be the next leader, is for you to be a subordinate. You get entrance into this exclusive club in which he has influence. There is nothing that he has that is that he can give to someone else that is of greater value. Yeah. And it's the situation that Pekko was in. Look at how he treated his personal subordinate. That's true. Before. Now, there was more going on there, sure. Right, right. But, um... That's a pretty big thing. He doesn't treat his subordinates badly. The last one he fell in love with. I mean, it's not the same position that... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was. It's also very much like a bit of togetherness. Like, you know, I trust you and like you enough that... That you can just be around me all the time. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure what to take away from this, all things considered. My favorite underwear. Despite the fact that it is my favorite underwear. It doesn't seem like I wear them because I like them. Apparently, I don't have strong feelings toward my underwear. Who the fuck has strong feelings <laughs> towards their underwear? <laughs> Look, if you are doing something for fashion, if you want if you want to like pose for the underwear, okay, at least that makes sense, right? Like I, I get that, I get that. But outside of that, does your underwear get the job done? What kind of a job does your underwear have? It seems to me that it ain't a very complicated job. So if it gets the job done, it's good enough. It is fucking underwear. You know something else? I have never talked about underwear so much in my entire goddamn life because I do not care. Where is the person that cares? Where are they? I will show them the goods. By the way, Hajime, you better not give those back. I don't want them. 